section B in the notes is general limitations. Or kind of the way I look at it, it's, hey, good for you. You're the right-of-way boat. Guess what? You have some responsibilities. Freedom ain't free. You know, that sort of thing. It's kind of like, hey, your starboard boat, great. Your leeward boat, super. But you have some limitations on you. Rule 14, we're going in order, 10 through 18, 10 through 20, but we'll touch on 19 and 20. We'll cover 18 in detail. Uh, rule 14 basically says avoid collision all the time no matter what. It doesn't mean if you're a starboard tacker that you have to anticipate what a port tacker is going to do. And start. I mean, you're obligated as a starboard tacker to kind of hold your course. It says in the preamble to rule 10, 11, 12, and 13 something about, you know, you have a responsibility. If I'm, if I'm an admiral and you're a brand new seaman recruit and I'm walking down the passageway of a ship, if I'm moving all the time, you can't even get out of my way. I should just hold my course and let you get to this, you know. You ever been in an office situation and you go that awkward, like, oh, if the senior person just holds their course, everybody just gets out of his way and it's, you know. So it's arbitrary. Um, but once it comes obvious that the port tacker is not aware, you have to do something. Um, it makes sense. You don't want a collision anyway. But it doesn't mean if you're a starboard tacker you want to wander all over the place and make it very confusing for the, for the keep clear boat. Or if you're the you know, you get the point. But when it becomes obvious at the last minute that, hey, this guy ain't got to move, i got to do something. Yeah, you do have to do something. Rule 14 is the rule. It's the rule that never sleeps, I think it's referred to. But rule 14 is the rule that if I protest Sean and he's just wrong and I know it, and I protest him, I fill out the form, I say the word protest, I lodge it in time, and we go into the room and... and um, um, it could very well be that I did not do everything in my power to avoid the collision, and I could have. And there's a witness, maybe on the committee boat, and we're both disqualified. So Rule 14 is a common sense rule that says, hey, bub, you might be right away, but you've got to avoid collision no matter what at the end of the day. Do everything in your power. And if you don't, you could be in violation of Rule 14. It also talks about if there's no injury or damage, that there's no penalty. So you're guilty, but there's no, there's no, there's no jail time. You know, so, but what is, what is damage? Anything that, de de that lowers the value of the boat. So, you know, if your boat's all beat up, I, I don't know what that means, but <laughs> yeah, avoid collision at all costs. It, it makes sense because on Saturday nights, again, racing is fun because we learn the most at, at these social sales. And this racing format is the best format to learn the most. So when you go out with your wife and kids and friends, you're, you're that much better. You, you, you're thinking, well, I, I can do this with 12 boats. You know, with no boats around me, this is really easy, and I'm better than I was before. It's just the best way to become a better sailor we have found. Um, but if you're actually going to get involved in real racing, um, you really just don't want to hit boats tactically. It's not fast to be in collision with another boat. And at Sar on Saturday evening, after Saturday's racing, there's a meal, there's a keg, and you have to stand there at the keg and... and, and Face somebody and be like, oh god, you know. It's, so you really want to do everything in your power to avoid these uncomfortable and costly situations. And so, rule fourteen: avoid avoid collision, even if you're the right of way boat. Again, section B, this whole section that we're covering, is the section that is the general limitations on the right of way boat. So everything before was the port, the, the keep clear boat in section A. Port keeps clear, sorry, wayward keeps clear. Leeward keeps clear of leeward. Um, the boat overtaking has to keep clear of the boat he's overtaking. Clear stern, clear head. Boat tacking has to keep clear of the boat that, that is not tacking. This is all about the limits on the right-of-way boat. So, rule 14, so avoid collision. Maybe if you pretend you own the boat. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. If you had a brand new boat, what would you do? I like that. What I would you do? <laughs> I, would you do? <laughs> I would avoid you a mile before you got there. Yeah, and you know, these boats are really durable. Um, it kind of reminds me of a time about six years ago. We were uh, in a situation, we tacked and got T-boned, and I thought for sure we were going to start sinking. I've never experienced anything like that. And I went by hand, I thought I was going to get a handful of fiberglass, nothing. Now, structurally, the boat may have been compromised, but that might, that might, might account for that soft four deck that you've been working on for three days. But, um, the boats are really durable, so there's a tendency to kind of get a little careless, to Marine's point. Yeah. Um, the boats are, are pretty pretty battle-worthy, and I'm glad we have them, and they, and they perform well. 
um, a lot of community sailing centers, the boats are crappy. They're junky. They're not. They're they're not raceable. Um, so yeah, yeah, treat it like you own it, and um, or you're gonna have this guy crying because he's he's made some boats very pretty. And uh, hey, why would you do the rubber chicken war? If you T-bone a boat, you have to sand fiberglass bare to the waist for two <laughs> no, hours. No, and I'll guarantee you'll never see. We don't want to do that. Jim Casada didn't have that time. We don't want to do you, man. Yeah. You'll be out there all in your half t-shirt all day. <laughs> well, I'll just have a piece of fiberglass. I want to be a boat. I'll just have to go. Like, <laughs> or better yet, we wrap them in fiberglass. For Public five humiliation is, is, is on the table. Mm -hmm. so, Let's do a rubber chicken award. Rule 15 yeah. is the next of the four in this section B general limitations. And all it says is, and check me on this, um, that the, a boat acquiring right away must initially, that's an important word, give the other boat room to keep clear. Initially kind of means, uh, you know, initially, a second or two. Room to keep clear. Let's chat about that for a second, then we'll go back to the actual rule. Room to keep clear is in the definition section. <coughs> And to keep clear, we know that means that the right-of-way boat, if they have to change course to avoid collision, then you haven't kept clear. So we know what to keep clear means. Room, in the definition section, means that the space a boat needs in existing conditions while maneuvering promptly in a seaman-like manner. I think that's pretty much it in, in word for word. In other words, you, you, room to keep clear means that you... Uh, if you have to give someone room to keep clear, then that means you have to give them, in the existing conditions, you know, if it's windy, not windy, uh, uh, you're, you're going really fast, going really slow, it, it, just use your head. Uh, you have to give someone room to keep clear. So if, um, if I've acquired the right of way, and I have to initially give someone room to keep clear, for the first second or two, I've got to give them a chance to get out of my way. I can't just go right away and then just go, you know, for, let me give you an example. You've acquired the right of way. So if somebody does something else and you get the right of way, that isn't acquiring the right of way. You have to acquire the right of way. So if you are this guy in your lured boat, you're the right of way already, and you, well, let's say you're like this. No, you should be right away. Anyway, you're going to finish the tack and you've acquired the right of way. You're on starboard. You have to, you can't just say starboard. You have to say starboard and give this guy, if you, if you had done this, starboard, he has no <coughs> way to get out of your way. And he doesn't have to anticipate that you're going to be a starboard tacker. He, he, you, have not, you have not initially given him room to keep clear. You haven't given him the space about needs, the existing conditions while maneuvering promptly in a seeming like manner. He has no chance. So that would be tacking too close. And so another example might be if you're going downwind and um, uh, you're both on port tack and um, this guy's crew reaches over, grabs the van, pulls the main over. Wait, I got this exactly wrong. You know what you mean. You know what I meant, huh? Oh. So they're both on port tack. This is the lure boat, he's the right-of-way boat. This is the windward boat, the keep clear boat. So this guy's the right-of-way boat, and then this guy, just the crew, just grabs the van, whips it over, he's on starboard. Mm -hmm. The second he's on starboard, can he just, you know, whale in there? Sure. He has to initially give room. <laughs> he has to give this guy a sec to go, whoa, you're right away, let me get out of your way. And it's, it's kind of a common sense thing. 15 doesn't come up a whole lot. But you have to initially give room to keep clear when you acquire the right of way. Does hailing shorten that? Um, no, it hailing is it. not required most of the but time. But it helps so, if you're hailing. Hailing always makes sense in my books, unless you're trying to withhold. You, know, you, don't, you don't want to give away what you're doing to somebody. This is a better example, though, of this Rule 15. This guy's, remember that guy limping along? You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and getting ready to start, maybe 20 seconds to go in a starting sequence. This guy's clear stern, this guy's clear ahead, so he has to keep clear because he's clear stern, he's overtaking, rule 12. Mm -hmm. So, as soon as he becomes overlapped, before the whole windward lured rule 11, same tack overlapped, comes into play, 14, changing colors, section B, limitations. So there's section A, there's section B. 14 is avoid collision. 15 is this acquiring right-of-way business. 
So you've acquired right away, right there. It triggers 15. So 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, boom, 15. You've acquired right away. You have to get, initially give this guy a chance to get out of your way. He doesn't have to anticipate this. As soon as this happens, he has to start worrying about being the windward boat. And you can't just come in like this, and, he, he, and he's got nowhere to go, because the steering is on the rear end of the boat. It's like a forklift. So he, he doesn't have any wiggle room to get out of your way. So you owe him this. The lured boat, the right-of-way boat, actually owes this guy room to keep clear. You have to kind of digest that a little bit. So 15, all these rules are saying, it, that's why I kind of wrote in the notes, hey, good for you, you're the right-of-way boat, but you owe this guy room to keep clear, initially. So you did that. You're enough of a distance away where this guy can get out of your way, because when you turn the tiller, obviously the rear end of the boat swings. So you've acquired the right-of-way, 12 gives way to 15. A second later, you know, one potato, two potato, boom, you're rule 11, same tack overlapped. The windward boat, this windward boat has to keep clear of the leeward boat. So now all of a sudden, red boat's kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm going to do something. i got to make sure I stay out of this guy's way. And if the blue boat is smart, he'll do some hailing, perhaps. He doesn't have to. It's smart if he does. And so there's your rule 15. Initially acquired right away, this is a very common situation. But if somebody comes right below you and, they, and, and, then they, and the blue boat just starts yelling, ah, 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 the red boat's going to go, I got nowhere to go, bro. And it's the truth. And that's the, the defense is, I got nowhere to go. You got to give me room to get out of your way. You got to give me room to keep clear. You gotta, you're right on me, man. I'm trying. I'm trying. I, I got nowhere to go. And that conversation is co constant on the starting line. So... Or since I'm screwed, I'm going down. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, sometimes, and this, this, is a, this is a case where both boats, get, both boats get hurt here. When you come up below somebody and you're too close, and, and this, this boat literally is getting wider as it, as it overlaps, this boat, to keep clear, might even have to turn this way to, to get out of it. Now you're glued. Now you're a cluster. I mean, forget about it. So... And it was caused by this dummy. So this guy's the keep clear boat, but this guy did not give him room initially to keep clear as in violation of 15. And guess what? The race committee's looking at this. So, you know, but they're so busy, they'll probably never see it. <laughs> Can you explain the second half of 15? That's what hangs me up. Ooh, what is the second half of 15? The boat acquires right away. She shall initially give the other boat room to keep clear unless... She inquires right away because of the other boat's actions. So if you sail from clear stern to below, then you have acquired that you've taken the right away. If you tack on to starboard or jive on to starboard, you but if somebody, if you're both um, if you're both um, same tack overlapped on uh, on starboard, <coughs> this other boat jives onto port, you haven't acqu you haven't acquired the right away, it was kind of given to you. And so that means, but, but it says you have to initially <coughs> give away, but it says unless, but you still have to so you don't avoid have to contact. Um, Different rule. Not to, not to beat a horse, because to be 100% honest, I'm going to refrain from getting too much into that based on the uh, grounds that I'm not sure. Okay. Um, um, but all, you, all the point of this is, don't be a, don't be a goofball. And being like, starboard, lower, you have to give room to keep, you got to give people a chance to get out of your way. That makes sense. If you want someone to get out of your way, you got to give them a chance to get out of your way. It's kind of like, well, let's say you're kicking someone out of your, you know, out of your life. And you got to give them a chance to get their stuff and get out. You know, you can't, you know what I mean? You want That's them out. Make it one. easy. Can't they just come home and find it in the yard? That's a terrible <laughs> analogy, Sean. I was watching a red right happen. So. <laughs> yes, that's happened to me. <laughs> so, um, keep the beer flowing, baby. <laughs> so, you acquire right away. You got to give the other guy a chance to get out of your way. If 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 you're in that situation, sixteen is a little more common. This one is is common. So is fourteen. It's sort of always on. Fifteen, fifteen is fleeting. It's initially. So no, it's not even that common, frankly. Sixteen says if you're the right away boat changing course, you have to give the other guy room to keep clear. So you're the right-of-way boat, you're, you're cruising around down here, pre-start, really common, and you start coming up. The second you change course as the right-of-way boat, in this case the lured boat, the blue boat, you're the right-of-way boat, you're the right-of-way boat! 
this right here, rule 11. But rule 16 says, hey, good for you, but you just changed course. All this right here, change course. I took some engineering in college, so I know what delta means. So you change course. You, ha you owe this guy room to keep clear. Notice it doesn't say anything subtle. or You owe him room to keep clear. You cannot change course, and, 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 uh, and ex you can't just nail him. You have to give him a chance to get out of your way. You have to give him the space a boat needs. This guy has to be given the space he needs in existing conditions while maneuvering promptly in a seaman-like manner. So when you come up on somebody, you have to... In the old days, it was not as uh, civil. It was a little more aggressive, on the down one particularly. But now, it's understood. You come up, you, you say, up, 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 come on, up, up, up. And there's this, you, you have to kind of, come on up, dude. You have to give him a chance to get out of your way. If you do this, come up, come on, up, get up, Red. He has no, he can't get out of your way. You have to give him room to keep clear. So, remember that. Just let it simmer over the next 12 months. When you change course, you have to give someone room to keep clear. Oh, by the way, port starboard. So this is kind of getting a little bit tactical, but that's okay. Well, uh, this guy's heavily reefed. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy has two sails. So we'll do this. This is the, the well, I'll leave it right on the line. So this kind of looks more like it, kind of, huh? And I don't know, 20 seconds to go. Um, I'll just use this right there. Um, so, the, one of the advantages of coming in on port tack and finding a hole is everybody's going this way. It's a little tactical, and then I'll get to the rule. Everybody's going this way, you're going this way. So, there's you're, you're going to, you know, do I like this hole, do I like this hole, do I like this hole, do I like this hole? When you're over here trying to find a hole, for one thing, you can't even see a hole from, from this angle. You can't see that there's a hole over here or here. You just can't see it very well. And these guys are going, I don't know, one knot, you're going 2.2 knots. It's going to take you forever to get to the hole. So port tack approaches, that doesn't mean start on port tack necessarily, but port tack approachers like it because they can find the hole and tack into it. <clears throat> While tacking, they have to keep clear of this guy, establish themselves on close haul course. Rule 15, they acquired right away. They start coming up, they're the lowered boat, they have to give them room to keep clear. Up, 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 scoot, 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 build this big hole at 10 seconds, fall down, get a ton of speed, and you're off to the races. The, 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 the reason this rule comes in, in, in handy here is, um, if this boat were, were um, starboard, this is port, and again, I'm not saying when you're port you have more power than a starboard tacker. What I'm trying to say, though, is when you're a starboard tacker, and as the second you change your course, you have triggered 16. You actually owe the poor little port tacker room to keep clear. I know it's a subtlety, and a lot of people would sit here that have been sailing 20 years and be like, that's just preposterous. But I can tell you, if, if, if this was the case, and this was, uh, you know, a, a, a wind was coming slightly from the left, and right here, there's a clear case of, I'm going to cross this boat with no, with no problem. And it doesn't have to be on the starting line, it could be anywhere. And let's say the, the wind changes, and, and all of a sudden, um, I think about this to make sure it's right. When it's a clear case of a cross, and then all of a sudden the wind, to, uh, sorry, all of a sudden the wind shifts to the right, which is a lift for this guy, and he can sail higher. He can turn and sail higher. All of a sudden we have a collision course. So here is an easy cross, but all of a sudden the wind shifts. And this guy starts to change course to take advantage of that. He has just triggered 16. No kidding. When you're right away boat and you're changing course, you are vulnerable. So you have to be really careful. 
So let that simmer. This is not something most racers are thinking about. Even the main boat would be head to win unless you change partially. It's, like it's true. Move. So you got. It's just you got to be careful. Yeah, it's true. I mean, this guy's probably going to be turning down, and he's port and changing course. But I guess my point of this thing is, uh, here's a better example. Let's say the wind is just square to the line. This is actually really common. This is a great example. Thank God I finally found it. Uh, reminded myself of it. This guy's uh, blaring down on a beam reach. How many times do you see this? The long line, six boats, plenty of room. And this guy's an easy cross, easy cross. And five, four, three, two, one. Whew, hardens up. He's changing course. Now, this is a tough one if you're a port tacker. You better know your freaking rules because the judges in the protest room are going to be like, hey, port starboard, you know, mm -hmm. good luck with that. Dave's looking at me like, yeah. Trust me, if, you, if I make the case that at five, you're blaring down the thing, and, and let's say there's a witness, and there usually is, and you're in beam reach, and you're early, and there's an easy cross, and then he, start, he's just, he just comes up, and he's in the process of going from a beam to a close to a close hull, all in one fell swoop. I, I turn, route 14, to avoid him, we kissed. Let me tell you. Don't be shocked if both boats get disqualified and a really savvy judge with a witness. That boat changing course, technically, and hopefully if there's witnesses to prove it, I'm not trying to be like threading, you know, splitting hairs here, but right away boats changing course have to give room to keep clear. It's not, it's not my opinion. It's, it's a well-known rule. Changing courses can be nothing more than a subtle few degrees. Well, subtle, I wouldn't say. I've been, well, a few degrees yeah. changing course. Again, if you were to have a protest, you, as a port tagger, you've got to go in there against the starboard tagger, and that's an uphill battle. Oh, I didn't change course. I just moved over a little bit. Well, if he, if he admits that, he just said it. So he's absolutely just he, indicted. He said himself. I moved over is enough. He'll just say, no, I was already close hauled. And, you know, um, you know, but lie. If he gives them enough time to attack, though, then it's... <laughs> Okay. Integrity is not for two. Anytime, anytime, anytime this guy's changing course, he has to give this guy room to keep clear. But if he's established course and given them enough time, maybe not a ton of time to tag. Or when yeah, is he I mean, established? Let's say he let's say let's say he's heading up and then says starboard, and this guy's enough time to tack, and that's fine. But if you're barreling down the down the line on a beam reach and then heading up the last second. For one thing, it's bad news. You want to be close reach in the five on five seconds heading to close haul. You don't, you don't want to be like, you know, five or three, two, one, zero, and then making this big turn. It's very slow. Mm -hmm. um, you want to be close reach, maybe even close haul at full speed, ideally, but typically close reach, building speed to go to a close haul. You don't want to be doing that anyway. It's really slow. But I guess my point is, and you can throw this around and maybe even not believe me, but I'm telling you, if you're a right-of-way boat changing course, you, you, you've triggered 16.1. And, um, and be careful. That's all I'm saying there, Joe. So in that instance, the port boat, or not the starter, port, the port boat thought that he was going to cross the line and, and not hit the other boat? Was that the idea? Yeah, in this no. case, it's an easy cross. Okay, okay. And then at 5 4 one 0 this guy, it's got it changed course. Cha everything changed. Okay. And all of a sudden, you have a collision situation. And all I'm saying, with the right witnesses and the right judges, that guy's in trouble. So, if, I mean, if they yell starboard, and you're on the port boat, you just would say, you know, don't change course or... I mean, would you, what would you respond? I mean, if I'm a port tacker and I'm in this situation and I see a guy breaking this rule and this is happening and I see it happening, I'm going to avoid him. Sure. But if, if, if this red boat says protest, and again, nobody wants to go to a protest room because you always run the risk of both getting disqualified. And nobody likes to just be frivolously litigious. <coughs> it's just annoying. But I'm just saying it's... Um, it's just something that you want to be aware of. If you're a starboard tagger and you're zooming around pre-start on starboard, you're actually obligated, once you get close, to hold your course so that this guy can avoid you. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best parts of being a port tack approacher is that when you get close, this guy's obligated to hold his course. Otherwise, he has to give me room to keep clear. And he has to kind of hold himself still as I leave out. That's what I'm going to say. Leave out and gas him. Hey, hold your... Hold yourself still while I leave value. It's just wonderful. 
to, to be a port tack approacher. And, and when you're a port tack approacher, the hail is, hold your course, hold your course. And when this guy, you know, what he's going to do to defend his hole, this hole he's got, is, you know, get bow down as quickly as possible. And then when I start to make my tack, he's going to go right back up and build his hole. <coughs> but I guess my point is, when you're in the right away boat, right, right away boat and you change course, you actually have to, you owe the guy room to keep clear, the other guy. And um, it's kind of a subtle thing, and not a lot of people don't understand it. Um, so avoid collision at all costs. When you acquire the right away, you have to initially give room to keep clear. And these are these right away boats that are subject to this. Right away boat changing course, you have to give room to keep clear. Kind of similar to this one, but this is initially, this is period. If you're, if you're right away boat changing course, you got to give room to keep clear. So now you know. You're thinking, yeah, bull crap, when does that happen? Not that often, to be honest. Well, in this poor tack approach thing, that's a little bit not so common. But uh, uh, on the downwind, this is really common. Um, this guy wants to come up, he's a lured boat. Mm -hmm. And he has to, he wants to come up, he has to give this guy room to keep clear. So when he come up, it's going to look like this. Get up, 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 oh, okay. He, he just can't come slamming into him. Um, so right away boat, lured boat, changing course. This is very common on the downwind. You go around the windward mark, and, and you're going to run. He's taking your air. You go higher. He goes higher. He overlaps. And then you want to go higher to get your air clear. You have to give this guy room to keep clear. Um, what if you don't think they're appropriately keeping clear? Yeah, well, you okay, so let's say I want to go up, 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 and you just won't. Um, I could protest you. Is it going to happen? I'm probably going to swear at you a little bit and say things to you, you know, and it's going to get contentious. Most people simply don't protest like that because it's just uncool. Nobody wants to be the guy that delayed the, you know, award ceremony on Sunday. You know, it's just kind of, but, you know, the rules are the rules, and we all break them, and sometimes we knowingly, um, unknowingly break them, and, and, um, and that's not good. And you have to later on look at that and go, oh, shoot, I broke that rule. I really need to stop doing that. And so, um, but yeah, if I want to go higher, there's a bunch of boats here. And this guy won't go up. And I'm the lured boat. I'm the red boat. I'm the lured boat. There's a bunch of boats, and they're baking us both very slow. You know, I could protest them, and it would get very annoying if this person did that. Um, yeah, so 17. I'm going to make a different color for this one because... You want to do 16 too? I don't, based on the fact that I don't remember what it says. Ah. In addition... It, I think it has to do with hunting. When I have to start, yeah. said, my port tack boat is keeping clear by sailing to pass a stern of a starboard tack boat. The starboard tack boat... I can actually read, I just didn't bring glasses, so... <laughs> I'm not, it's going to go with a big print. Yeah, <laughs> big boy print. The starboard tack boat shall not change course if, at, if, as a result, the port tack boat would immediately need to change course to continue keeping clear. I'm pretty sure that that's referred to hunting, yeah. and that's the situation. Remember, like five years ago, and you had a less experienced person on the helm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And then the other boat, same thing. Oh, and we and did not follow uh, Rule 14. Yeah, when the right away boat <laughs> does some, that's the that's the you know the admiral should just hold his course and go down the hallway so the seaman recruit can avoid him. You're kind of obligated to hold your course and not not do this not do this like hey I'm gonna I'm playing chicken with you. I'm pretty sure that I have to gaff it off or pretend like I know the rules perfectly because that that's one of those subtleties that never really gets talked about. But um, I think the other place that comes into play is if you're crossing. And you have someone, a poor tacker, who's choosing to duck. You can't, if you're the, there you go. If you're the starboard yeah. boat, you can't fall off and make it harder to duck further. Right? Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. No one does that. No one, no one does that. You know, um, no one is sailing is a turd. Everybody's real cool. But yeah, that's right. You know, you can't, uh, someone's trying to, you know, do something. You can't make it harder on them. Someone's doing their um, penalty turns. You can't. You know, Chris is doing his two circles because he fouled somebody, and I can't be like, oh, oh and go after him. Everybody knows that someone doing their turns is, you have to keep clear of boats, everybody. So, yeah, so no hunting. You can't hunt down other boats. Um, 17 is, is, I want to give it its own color because it's, 
It's um, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's yeah. So got it. Don't fall. <laughs> okay, so you might think, okay, so I'm going downwind. I'm just going to put the starting line off the side here, and uh, let's just you know what? Let's pause there, uh, Joel. 